Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Pour your spirit upon us. Pour your life in us. We pray within Yeshua. Amen. Well, Miss Davis is going to read <coughs> Oswald for the day. Just a little turn of events here. We'll talk about that a little bit. The habit of rising to the occasion, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, Ephesians 1.18. Remember that you have been saved so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in your body, 2 Corinthians 4.10. Direct the total energy of your powers so that you may achieve everything your election as a child of God provides. Rise every time to whatever occasion may come your way. You did not do anything to achieve your salvation, but you must do something to exhibit it. You must work out your own salvation, which God has worked in you already. Philippians 2.12 Are your speech, your thinking, and your emotions evidence that you are working it out? Are you still the same miserable, grouchy person set on having your own way? Then, then it is a lie to say that God has saved and sanctified you. God is the master designer, and he allows adversities into your life to see if you can jump over them properly. By my God, I can leap over a wall, Psalm 18, 29. God will never shield you from the requirements of being his son or daughter. 1 Peter 4, 12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Rise to the occasion. Do what the trial demands of you. It does not matter how much it hurts as long as it gives God the opportunity to manifest the life of Jesus in your body. May God not find complaints in us anymore, but spiritual vitality, a readiness to face anything he brings our way. The only proper goal of life is that we manifest the Son of God, and when this occurs, all our dictating of our demands to God disappears. Our Lord never dictated demands to his Father, and neither are we to make demands on God. We are here to submit to his will so that he may work through us what he wants. Once we realize this, he will make us broken bread and poured out wine with which to feed and nourish others. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Uh, this is one of those that is worth commenting on. <coughs> It almost sounds like in some ways that he's saying, go and do everything in your strength. Um, but <clears throat> if we define it, I know it's simplistic, but it is uh, still closer to it than the silly thing that the church says grace is. Um, the desire and the power to do God's will. And we, I... I no, I've looked back at my life, oh my goodness, everything I did was in the flesh. And that's not so. Um, because, just because I have the thought of something, doesn't mean it's coming out from my heart, from my belief system. <coughs> if I have the thought of, thought of doing something right, and, and then I, I go and do it. <clears throat> That thought is from God. I mean, that's the thing I think it's hard to get used to because you know, I think the assumption is, is that, well, with God in my life, what I will do is I will completely act extemporaneously on a, you know, a reactive type thing to what's around me. That's not so. There are times God will give you the thought in other words, the desire, the desire to do God's will. Um, and you'll go, okay, there's that thought. Yeah, I'll go and do something right. Later on, you'll go, I was doing it in the flesh, and I beg to differ. Maybe it was in the flesh. I, that, I don't know. But just because you have a thought, and it's not necessarily spontaneous, it doesn't mean that it's something that you necessarily came up with. I think that was one of the big shocks to me as he began to speak in my mind uh, and tell me, okay, let's do this. And of course my thought is, okay, I had that thought. I'm going to do it. 
if I have the thought <clears throat> and give myself over to him, he, he is the power to, to do it. He's first the desire and then the power uh, to follow through. There will be much that you do that is reactive, extemporaneous, surprisingly good that God will do in you. Surprisingly good is probably a good way to put it because I think in one of the Oswalds he says, no one will be more surprised, more surprised in the world than you are when you start acting properly. And uh, that's true. Um, but we, we don't, we should not make fun of small beginnings. We shouldn't, they, they're, that's the way they start. And it's the way we start. And that's, that's okay. He gives you the desire. And you go, oh, I think I'll do that. I promise you he's empowering you to do it. And so it is God's grace whether we understand it or not. Ms. Davis, mm -hmm. do you have anything you want to allow on? Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody have anything they want to say about any of this? Tyler? Yeah, I remember. In my early days of I mind seeking the Lord in a way, in a deeper way that I never had growing up, and yeah, you think, it's like, okay, when you start walking in a relationship with God, you're, okay, I'm going to start hearing his voice. And it's like, okay, what does that look like? You know, is it that audible voice? Is it, you know, just this strong impression? Is it, you know, painting words in the, the clouds? Or, you know, whatever. What does it look like? And I remember when he started um, teaching me that he speaks to us in our thoughts. And it's like, okay, if I have this thought, um, forgive or do something that's obviously in accordance with God's will according to the scripture. That's not me. You know, that, that's the Lord because and it's, it's not the devil. You know, the devil would never tempt me to do, to love my neighbor, um, to, to walk in according to the Ten Commandments. Um, and... There's no good thing in my flesh, so it's not me. So by the process of elimination, it's the Lord. Yeah. And um, it wasn't a booming voice, but it's just, it felt like just, oh, that just felt like my thought. But actually, when you look a little bit closer, it was the Lord. Yeah. And it just seemed so natural. But to me, that, that that's a good picture of the at one minute. And when we begin to walk in a relationship with him, it's almost, there's times where it's very obvious of like, whoa, where did that come from? That was just like, you know, more of the audible type thing. Um, but more often than not, it's just, you can't really define, okay, was that me? Was that God? But it's just, it feels like you, but when you look at it, you know that it had to come from the Lord because it wasn't, um, it wasn't evil. <laughs> and that's true. You know, uh, <coughs> James makes a number of astounding accusations against us. But let's let's turn over to James and let's just look at one of them. <clears throat> Oh, where is that? Let's see. Well, I'm looking for where it says, hey. therefore, He who 
Um, you know, it's the right thing to do. Is that in there? Yeah. Four what? Four seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Four seventeen, please. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. God may give you a desire. The, the thought, wait a second, that's not me, to even do that. It, it comes first. Innocuously. This is a good word. It, it, it comes to your surprise, but it's so tiny, you don't recognize it. Wait a second, this is Almighty God? Yeah, that would be Him. Uh... He is the one that stops making your life about yourself. It's small states. It, it, he, he knows that anything beyond that would be too overwhelming. But if there's, if we understand, and it's, it's true, it really is true, that the person that gets the most out of your salvation <coughs> is you. Because to constantly be answering to self and its demands, the frenetic, frantic, hungry, ravenous, what I'm looking for, ravenous behaviors that the self does, the self, the you that is constantly, it's constant, and we don't realize it until you, until you begin to get set free from it, you do not realize how you are constantly going after things about you. That's it. How will this affect me? Is this going to make me look better? Am I going to be cool if I do this? Am I, uh, you know, all of these different things. And it's constant. I mean, we don't realize it, but it, you're enslaved to yourself. It's uh, a horrible enslavement, too. It will not stop driving you, no matter how tired you are, no matter how much you've done things for yourself that day, it wants more. Because all you do when you give it more food is you strengthen it to be more hungry and more ravenous in your direction. Um... He died so that those who live, now live, would no longer live for themselves, but for him. You may think, why would I want to live for him? Well, first he saved you, but secondly, it's a lot safer than living for you. It's a lot safer, more peaceful, quiet than living for you, Ms. Davis. Anybody else in this? Thank you, Tyler. Okay. Um, oh, yes. I just, I just found this first. Um, um, in, in Hebrews 13, right before James, and it says, um, uh, talking about God, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. That's all kind of was. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you at there? Uh, 13, um, 21. <clears throat> Equip you in every good thing. He equips you in every good thing to do his will. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Jeremy. That's, that's very good. And this is what we're equipped to be and equipped to do. Um, again, it, look, look at the way it's putting it. Whip you. Quit <coughs> cheating. <laughs> I thought there's no chapter 13 in James. There told. used to be. He said I'm doing a city. Yeah.
<laughs> okay. How, how did that? <laughs> the English used to say uh, they would make you subtract something. They would do yes, and the next week plus one or minus one get save for one. So we're going to go with this James chapter one save for one. Put this back into Hebrews thirteen. 21, equip you and every good thing. The equipping, you're gaining something from the outside. Okay? You're gaining something from the outside to do his will. Working in us that is pleasing in his sight. Now, you know, it almost sounds, if we speak anthropo anthrop anthropocentrically, um, We'll be thinking that we're bringing God down to our level, and that oh look, I'm th I'm thinking that, but the equipping and every good thing to do is equipping us is the desire and the power. This makes sense. The desire and the power, and we look sometimes and go, wow, he God's so arrogant. say the way that you love one another is by loving me and the way that you love me is by keeping my commandments and thinking on it all the time and the reason that God says these things is not because he's just so dying for your worship and so dying for you to show up it's, it's that focus on him is the only safe place Focus on him is the only safe place in the world. Everyone else, including yourself, will steal your life from you. And he steals your life, but the great thing is he gives it back. New, improved. Thank you, Jeremy. Ms. Davis, you have anything? Yeah, it's sort of been Took you long enough. It's all right. Um, all the working out our salvation the Lord was bringing to mind about it this week just if we murmur and complain in in the everyday situation and, and this talks about if you're still the grouchy miserable person having your own way you lie that God has saved you and sanctified you it is a lie and I was thinking how in the re-education I was telling yes. this to Dr. D the day before yesterday, I guess, camps. I thought, what do they force you to do to confess? To confess along with what they want you to say. That's the enemy working. That's what he tries to get us to do by complaining, murmuring, is to go along with what his re-education camp is saying. Come on, in the pressure in, in our lives, and that's what he's wanting us to confess in agreement with what he wants us to say. And it's, you know, under those pressures that people are put in, in other countries, communist countries and such, you know, what is it to re-educate them to say differently than what they're used to speaking? And it just came to mind, that's the enemy's ploy. Obviously, it's the enemy using the pressure of these men to do those evil things to people. But it's no different than what we experience. I mean, it's different. Yes, it's a greater intensity. Um, but it's the same, same old, same old. Nothing new under the sun. He's trying to get us to agree with him in complaint and murmuring and saying things that wouldn't be pleasing to the Lord, you know, the going along with his re-education programs by making us agree with him in those things. And I thought that is, if I complain in the days of every day, just when we live in a country that's really filled with God's blessings in so many ways, uh, what would I do whenever just a little more intensity of the pressure coming in my life, you know, if I complain now, then I will throw in the towel easily whenever the, the pressure is intense even in a greater way. 
And it's again God saying with fear and trembling we're to work out what he's given us inside. It's his grace working in us to deny ungodliness and the worldly deserves and to you know it's his empowerment in us and um that i just those things were coming to mind lately that um god wants the confession to line up with the life that's true for me that he says don't complain you know don't come speak against situations or whatever and not um let the enemy have our tongue and that god wants to have our tongue he wants to be in control of us and it's the spirit his spirit that is the spirit that gives me self-control <clears throat> and in this he alone is love he alone can manifest those things and he alone only can do that when i'm abiding and relying upon him so you know just those things kind of in line with what we're talking about and, and